Kenyan politics has become very, very confusing. And a clear sign of that is when you see analysts, political analysts, avoiding certain topics, being vague about others, and in other instances, being totally silent, you know that even them, they are confused. They don't know what's happening. So what's really happening in Kenya? Well, today I will dare to do a state of the nation video despite all the confusion. Oh yes, so here goes. And let us start with the biggest rumor in the country called Kenya right now. Okay, indeed it may have crossed the line from rumor to the latest information from very senior respected analysts. What we have here folks are persistent rumors, stubborn persistent rumors, that there's some sort of deal that has been struck between President Ruto and Raila Amolo Odinga. And the evidence these very senior analysts are giving, yeah, many of whom I really respect, is Ruto's recent tour to Luonyanza. They are saying the way he was received, the way he got that support from governors, there is no way that would have happened without Baba's nod, yeah, without his agreement. Very convincing. And to make this even more believable, Ruto himself has been quoted as having said that Baba squeezing him to work. That loosely translated means that Ray Lodinga is in his corner. They are talking. They are working together. Etc. Etc. Ruto himself said that. So, is it true? Well, maybe I'm going to shock you today. In my opinion, I do not agree. In my opinion, things are not what they seem to be. The political situation in our country called Kenya is much more complex, complicated, than most of us may want to realize. Okay, And in that kind of situation, sweeping statements, sweeping conclusions don't cut it. That's my opinion. Admittedly, my informed opinion. But please allow me to back up so that we go deep into this and do a proper analysis. The kind of analysis most of you have come to expect from yours truly. Because anything less will not cut it. So let's get down to it. And let us start by acknowledging, actually confessing, mshene na kwanga tamu. <laughs> Rumors, mshene, are sweet. That is the truth. They make great headlines. They enable videos on YouTube to have a lot of views. Okay? And regulars on this channel will already know we don't do rumors on this channel. But having said that, I may need to inform you, in case you didn't know, that rumors are not completely useless to a journalist. They are not. Indeed, they are very useful to a political analyst. How so? They help you gauge the situation on the ground, what people are thinking. And even more important, historically, some of the biggest stories that have ever been broken anywhere in the world started as a mere rumor. Many times, as a ridiculous rumor nobody wants to believe. But somebody followed it up, got the information, confirmed the details, and broke a huge story. So rumors are not completely useless, apart from being sweet. So let us enjoy a bit as we get deeper into this very important analysis. There is a karuma that shockingly suggests that when Mainan Jenga was released the last time, he had a meeting with some file 
waiving government officials most of you understand what file waving is <laughs> you know governments wave like a file we have this information on you we have this incriminating evidence on you we can revive this old case yeah which will finish you but uh, there's just something you can do for us I love you file to taweka kando. So now you understand what I mean when I say a file waving government official. But let us not forget this is just a rumor. Okay? Not confirmed. Now this co-official made a deal with Maina Njenga that his work, his mission on being released would be to destroy Deputy President Rigadi Kashagwa. Kabisa politically now those of us gullible kenyans who listen to politicians and take what they are saying as gospel truth kindly please leave the room <laughs> because i don't want people shooting back telling me chris you're wrong regardi gashagwa said this he said that is in full support of the Ruto presidency and the government. You cannot convince us otherwise. Such interruptions will just waste time as we enjoy Mshene. <laughs> anyway, on a serious note, anybody who doubts that there is a problem between Rigadi Gashagwa and William Samuel Ruto, hey, hey, at this late hour, Please review and reconsider your position. You know there's a video clip doing the rounds. In fact, it has gone viral. Yeah. Showing Rigadi Gashagwa with an expression that is priceless. <laughs> Ruto, Ichungwa and other people holding some document. Rigadi Gashagwa is standing on the side. And we are being given close-ups of Gashagwa's reaction yeah and his priceless reaction is no 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 I want nothing to do with what you people are doing ah ah sitaki sitaki siko hapo mtaniona mtajua nitawanyorosha that is what we read from his face very clearly I'm sure most of you have taken in that particular clip in case you haven't I'm sure you're taking in the photos on your screens right now from that particular clip very revealing very truthful because body language never lies yeah the mouth lies all the time but it is impossible to get your body language to lie you can act yeah you can pretend you can put a forced smile and pretend everything is okay which is not what gashagwa did in this instance Yani ili muuma ika muuma akuweza kuvumilia. <laughs> so please let's be clear on that. There is a problem. And so this Maina Njenga rumor is very believable. Yeah? Apart from being sweet, it is very believable. However, in my opinion, it is false not true and there is another even juicier rumor yeah, doing the rounds i'm not sure if you've heard this particular one yet yeah but here goes according to this mshene regardi gashagwa is planning to leak information very sensitive information that will paint the Ruto administration in very poor light. Now, to be totally honest, I do not have any information to confirm or even to suggest that this rumor could be true. However, my gut feeling tells me it is true. Why? Because of the character of this man Rigadi Gashagwa. You know, it is impossible to analyze politics. Many people try to do it. 
but it is impossible to analyze politics without first of all starting with the characters of the individuals involved. How do you do it? Character is very important. And character will never lie. If you stick close to character, it is very difficult to get it wrong. Because humans are consistent yeah, according to their characters. And please allow me to remind you, yeah, because I'm sure most of us have forgotten, how Rigadi Gashawa became deputy president. He became deputy president using blackmail. That is really what it was. You will remember that nobody yeah, within UDA wanted Rigadi Gashagwa to be running mate to Ruto, including UDA members hailing from the house of Mumbi. They didn't want him. Instead, they wanted that other man who is now in Interior CS, Kidure Kindiki. And you remember that Bwanagashagwa put his foot down and demanded a refund of what he had invested in UDA. And he did a lot of other things, including organizing massive demonstrations yeah, all the way from Nyeri, Karatina, on the whole route to Nairobi, protesting the alleged sidelining of Gashagwa from UDA. People were chanting, no Gashagwa, no UDA. I'm sure now you remember. And I'm sure now you understand why my gut feeling tells me that there could be some truth in that particular rumor. Yeah? And now that we have thoroughly enjoyed ourselves with rumors, let us now move to hard facts. Fact number one. The ground in the Mount Kenya region and indeed in most of the country called Kenya is very hostile towards the Kenya Kwanzaa administration just now. That is a fact. And I expect this hostility to continue to increase in the days and weeks to come. Now based on that fact alone does a handshake, secret or otherwise, with Rail Odinga make sense to you? If you are Rail Odinga and you had this information, would you be interested in a handshake, in working with this administration? Answer that question for yourself. You know, for anybody who wants to measure political temperatures in Kenya properly, I believe the best place yeah to put your thermometer is in western kenya because western kenya seems to have gained a lot from the kenya kwanza government msalia mdavadi is now a very powerful super prime cs yeah, he's a prime cs but he is more than that and therefore one would expect that western kenya the mulembe nation are very firmly behind the government at this point in time. But actually, <laughs> the very opposite is true. Did you hear about that incident with Halwale recently, where he was unable to address his people in Kakamega? Yeah, they kept on interrupting him. They kept on shouting him down, etc., etc. That, to me, is a confirmation that in the Mulembe nation it is like the rest of Kenya, most parts of Kenya. The temperatures are rising yeah, and the feeling on the ground is very hostile towards the Kenya Kwanza government. So what is really happening here? In my opinion there are times in politics when things get very confusing is normal and the only way to handle this is to give it time to allow the dust to settle and then things will become very clear it is futile to try and move forward when the dust storm is so thick in the air you can hardly see anything how do you move forward 
the only option we have is to relax, sit back, move back from the dust and wait. Because the dust will always settle. Yeah, it's guaranteed. The dust storm cannot, can never last forever. But even more interesting, yeah, we need to ask the question, what usually causes this political confusion? Yeah, where things are not clear, what usually causes it? <laughs> the answer would interest you. It usually happens when there is a very serious Chinyamaji struggle, a war actually going on, with each side of the political divide fighting for control, fighting for an advantage. And of course, as they do this, they will reach out to various parties. And many of these parties, being politicians, will send mixed signals. Hence, the confusion. And in the case of Kenya, when you throw in the usual propaganda being spewed out at a very rapid rate, it just becomes a total mess. I'm sure you've heard of the propaganda that wanted to convince Kenyans that actually Ruto toured Nyanza, accompanied by Raila Odinga recently. I'm sure you saw that online. Not true. Pure propaganda. There's nothing like that. Although, I recognize the fact that some Kenyans may have swallowed that. Yeah? In buying to the narrative that a secret handshake has happened. But even as we wait for the dust to settle, yeah, so that we can see clearly what has happened here, in my view it is very important to acknowledge that as far as the Mount Kenya region is concerned and unity of the Mount Kenya region, that has already happened. Okay, I need to repeat that. It's very important. The Mount Kenya region unity across the political divide has already happened. You Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Whatever happens next, that one about Mount Kenya unity has already happened. And of course the political consequences from that are huge. The house of Mumbi cannot be ignored. Some people think if they don't have anybody in state house, the house of Mumbi does not matter. Hey, you're wrong. This is a very important community in Kenya. Like them or hate them. Okay? So the political consequences from this development are going to be huge. And they're going to be felt in the country called Kenya for weeks and months to come. And indeed, in my opinion, they will heavily impact what is going to happen to Kenya. Okay? Now, before I go, last chance for you to get my latest audiobook, The Root of Kenyans Will Never Know, yeah, at only $20, or Kenya shillings 2007 only. The price is due to go up very shortly after this. So please join those who have already grabbed this amazing opportunity, which I guarantee you yeah, taking this audiobook will help you greatly to understand the current politics and what is really going on. You can see the details on your screens right now. Once again, I highly recommend it. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekoji.